Out of the Grave by Helen H. Dudley From Midnight Mystery Stories December 1922 My husband and I were rare pals and bound together by an unusually close spiritual sympathy. Before he went away, he said he would surely come back to me, alive or otherwise. I received notification that he had fallen in battle and that his body was being shipped home. I could not be comforted, nor could I find solace in tears, as some women did. My grief was the stony, dazed variety. I used to sit in his study hour after hour, and wonder if he could come back. On this particular night, I was holding lonely vigil as usual. The servants had retired, and the house was absolutely silent. I could hear the grandfather clock in the hall ticking solemnly. Suddenly I was conscious of an odd, smothering sensation and decided to go out into the garden. So I was seated on a bench beside the sundial when the far-reaching bell strokes from the distant tower of Big Ben began to mark off twelve sonorous intonations. The clock in our hall echoed more rapidly, but ere either clock had concluded its announcement of midnight, I sat up, tense, in my deep morning attire, my heart hammering wildly. Questing through the strange silence, footsteps sounded around the bend in the road, terribly familiar footsteps. Despite the fact that they halted a little as though he who walked was lame. Convinced that my passionate grief and longing had pierced the border, and that my husband had come back to me, as he had promised, I remember wondering if I could see him, or if I would just hear the sound of an invisible approach. As the footsteps came nearer, I could not breathe for a moment, it seemed. The next I was assuring myself that it was only some wayfarer going home. But then I heard the faint sound of that whistle with which he always announced his arrival at our gate. I was positive that I would behold an apparition. I got to my feet, somehow, and there, standing weirdly in the moonlight, was the familiar figure in officer's uniform, most convincingly intangible because of the swaying shadows of the trees. I must have cried out. Anyhow, when I came to, the ghost was carrying me upstairs. My husband had received a wound in one foot, and was allowed home leave. Fearing that a wire would frighten me, he had written, and the letter was delayed in censoring. It arrived the next day. The death notification that I received was a mistake. The End of Out of the Grave by Helen H. Dudley